All right, this is part two of When the Truth Hurts, Biblical Encouragement for Exposing Family Secrets and Overcoming Loss. So I was using, and I will continue to use Jesus, the truth teller of all truth tellers, the truth seeker of all truth seekers. They didn't like Jesus. The Pharisees did not like Jesus. Jesus was no friend to the system, to the process. Jesus was an enemy. Okay. Just like some of you are telling entertainers business. You are an enemy. Doesn't matter how you sugarcoat it or, well, I really didn't say this, but I said that. Look, those who are pence players, hustlers, gamblers, drunkards, what have you. It doesn't matter whether you said just a little bit or, well, I didn't mention any names or what, you know, because sometimes people water some things down. They sugarcoat. I've listened to some of these interviews over the years. Yeah, I see. You're not totally 100 about some things. Okay, so be it. But you're still an enemy because you were disloyal. You weren't supposed to say anything, you see. See, when you, and I'm talking to a specific group. Of course, not all of you are, but a specific group, they know who they are. You weren't supposed to expose anything. You took an oath. You gave allegiance to your brotherhood, to your sisterhood. But one of the most feared ends up out in the atmosphere being exposed. And now some folks have some courage. But even though you have some courage to tell some things, you're not telling it all. So you're not like Jesus. See, oh, I'm a believer. I'm this, I'm that. No, but see, you still held back. But, but, but no, no. See, when God puts you on this mission, there is no tone. There is no stone. I'm sorry. There is no stone that is left unturned. So even if you're not telling the public everything behind the scenes, you should be telling people who enforce the law everything. You see, that's a safe space depending on who is presiding over that case. Now, but I don't know. I don't know. You, you don't know. That's why you walk with the one true God. We keep drawing you near to the one true God. We keep telling you to pray. We tell other people to pray for you. I've been praying for listeners on this channel for years. And I will tell you that what I see in the spiritual realm is often familial challenges. That's why I had this familial approach more so than the hidden opposition, the occultic, the witch, the warlock, the medium, the spiritist. But yes, we did say years ago that this season will come, except it's not just one, it's many. And this is what we've been praying for. And it's not just the worldly. You've got to investigate the religious leaders as well. The Pharisees, the people who talk out of two sides of their mouth. And those names have been served up on a platter. And as believers in Christ, we don't care that that is the mega minister, the televangelist. When he's wrong, he's wrong. And when God has allowed these things to happen, you know you're to go full speed ahead. Don't hesitate on our part. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, they'll be so broken up. We got plenty of people that God has raised up that will nourish us and keep us calm. We don't need the 90s televangelists. There are early 2000 televangelists. The mega ministers, we don't need them. You see what God is doing back in the day? Yeah, we didn't have what we have nowadays. But now we've got options. We've got all sorts of people we can listen to. We've got all sorts of places we can go to gather, to fellowship. We don't need the corruption. We don't need the legalism. We don't need these human traditions. What we need is Jesus like never before. And Jesus was exposing when it came down to the taxes and money. Matthew 22 
17 through 21, tell us then what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Can I tell you some people try to set you up, even within a family construct? I remember back in the day, it used to be people listening on the phone line when folk would call. Here, I'm going to put you on real quick, so this way you can listen. What? Yeah, I just want I just want to show you how she is. And when some folks didn't know that some of us was listening. See, that's why when we say some people in the family are straight up liars, they talk out of two sides of their mouth, they're hypocrites, and then some they were trying to set us up, but God said don't answer that phone. My God. Hello, hello. He said don't answer that phone. But this is my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my auntie, my uncle, my grandfather, my grandmother, my foster mom, my foster, my spiritual, my this, my that. God says, don't answer the phone. Luke 16 and 13. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other. Hmm. Or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. So you've got two people in a room, for instance, and both of them you call master. Oh, I'm going there with some of these little groups here, mm -hmm. organizations, brotherhoods and sisterhoods. You've got two masters. doesn't matter whether this one's a male and this one's a female or this one is a they and this one calls themselves or herself something else. The point is, is that you've got two masters and both of these masters gave you money. Doesn't matter what side of the polit political spectrum that you're on either God says what you cannot serve both God and money and what Jesus was doing was he was showing people who they were without calling them a bunch of names without cussing and acting like a fool without being an actress or actor without being dark and disturbing and highly critical. If we follow in the ways of Jesus, if you call yourself a believer in a one true God, peep, you will reach more people. You will reach more people in terms of their spirit. See, you can reach people with a with views right with a click here and a click there oh i tuned in oh she turned in now we up at a million plus views right but did anybody change within did anybody feel encouraged enough to go okay i'm going to go in that next room and expose my abusive whoever that might be you see see we're dealing with the heart the soul the spirit and when the enemy is at work it's the surface. It's what appeases the five senses. But the intelligent mind, the, the educated mind, the mind that is on the one true God handles things in the way God handles them. And sometimes it is in a way where no one sees my God. And there's power in that. It's not always about the visual, about what we see. What we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what the video shows, what the letter shows. It's what goes on behind the scenes because a lot of times much of this is a distraction from the bigger picture. So we'll give them this, but we got all of this behind the scenes. And we'll even get a few people to leak some things out. Just to satisfy their insatiable desire for information. But this over here. We gonna hold on to this. Is there really some freedom, some peace, some overcoming? Is there gonna be a new law, a new system, a new process? Is the entire industry going to be uprooted? We're talking about athletic programs. We're talking about 
acting. We're talking about singing and dancing and modeling. We're talking about medicine. We're talking about publishing. We're talking about all of these manufacturing, real estate, food and beverage. It's corrupt all across the board. From your house to the White House. People, places, and things, the Lord says, that have long got away with, dare we say it? <laughs> Matthew six nineteen through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy. Many a celebrity have done this. And you know who is really a child of God when they have nothing in the end. They're utterly destroyed. And people don't want to touch them with a, with a 10 foot pole that used to touch all over them. Oh, uh, she wanted them now. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If we're talking about a president of the United States, doesn't matter the name. We're just talking about a president of the United States. Doesn't matter the political affiliation. We're just talking about a president of the United States. Because there will be more running in the future. They're already chosen. They're already being groomed day in and day out. That one has to be challenged. We have to go beyond what someone looks like. We got to go beyond what someone says to appeal to our selfish interests. We got to go beyond who they know and what they know and where they study to know. God's concerned about the soul. God's concerned about the spirits and those who are spiritually gifted should know better. And when people, places, things, process, systems, laws, and so forth are exposed like what Jesus was doing. Don't be so quick to say that somebody doesn't know what they're talking about, especially when you haven't bothered to do any type of research. And a lot of times people don't bother to do too much of anything because they don't care. One of my recent polls, hmm, at the time of this recording, it was at 22%. It'll probably grow even more. That little, that little response of, I don't care, you see. And so if you don't care, don't say too much of anything to anyone about what you think of this one and that one, because you don't care remember and I'm holding people to that I'm holding them to it Jesus though he cared a lot that's why he opened up his mouth that's why he had something to say he spoke on sin and I know this rubbed everybody the wrong way back in his day and it still does in our own families when I expose a pimp a player a hustler a gambler a drunkard it's either quiet it's either someone defending it's either someone saying, I don't do drama. It's it's uh, someone saying something along the lines of, you sure you was around during that time? <laughs> or yeah, they probably were, but yeah. And your children and your grandchildren are doing the same type of thing. Oh, no, they're not. No, they're not. Oh, you might not call it what we call it. But it still looks like pimping, still looks like playing, still looks like hustling, it still looks like gambling, it still looks like drunkenness to me. 
You can call it what you want, but at the end of the day, we see it for what it is. See, the position that I'm in is only the position that some of my elders should have been in before they closed their eyes, but they were too scared. The Lord showed me that. He said, this is why she behaved the way she behaved. This is why this one behaved. Because the time period at which they grew up, women were to fear men. And this is why some men have a problem with women opening up their mouths. Because you're supposed to stay in your place. They will even use spirituality, religion, to tell me what a woman is not supposed to do. And meanwhile, God says that, uh, please look at the scriptures. I did use women to open up their mouths. Matter of fact, the first one on the scene when Jesus was, uh, you know, when he came out of, of his, uh, um, his, uh, crucifixion and, and so forth was resurrected was who? Yeah, exactly. And if you don't know what I'm referencing, you need to go back and read because see, there's too much of this pushing women aside and saying what the woman can't do. And he, as much as some of you are, you don't like what you're seeing around you. But there is something on the inside that you're excited because it's different. But just because something is different and just because we're excited about all of these things that are going on. Doesn't mean that we're supposed to be asleep at the wheel. Jesus is still exposing. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. This isn't a setback. And for some of you all, you need to be very careful about who you're talking to within your family. You need to be mindful of who you want to drive you, to move you, to motivate you in your civic group. In your sisterhood, your brotherhood. We have to look at everything. And when we have members of our community at the church, because some folks, oh, where's she going with this? When we have members within the church who are acting in ways that are unorth unorthodox, that's all the more reason. Why? It's not about a gender. It's about how somebody conducts his or herself or they. Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Just giving you an example here. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such, a, such women. See, this was the time period. Now, what do you say? They're challenging Jesus. They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. How many times are people still using this strategy to get people to say something or do something? Doesn't matter once again, who wants to be in the top dog position to govern this land? You slip up, they're going to wash your face with it, right? But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger when they kept on questioning him. Right. Question after question after question. He straightened up and said to them, let any one of you, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Exactly. And in the family, why are you not taken up for your believers? Your sisters, your brothers in Christ, who you know that they speak truth. Why are you speaking ill? disrespectful, disregarding, teaching your children to be the same. You know not what you do. There's consequences for that. Because see, just as I used in the other audio, part one, about the chair, people don't do their research in terms of who you are in Christ. They handle you like they handle, you know, a stranger on the street. Can I tell someone there's a different way to handle a person who's of faith? And the fact of the matter that you even choose to handle is a problem. Because see, even when I was out in the world, I had enough good sense. And I've said this in many other audio. I had enough good sense to leave believers alone. If that's what she says, that's what she says. If that's what he says, if 
okay. My personal experience wasn't that. And we leave it at that. We don't start name calling. We don't start talking about somebody is this and somebody is that. But see, people do that because they don't want you to process some things. They don't want you to heal from some things. They want to slow the momentum down in terms of your bringing truth to light. I think of Oprah. I think of years and years of her being out there interviewing different people about all sorts of subject matter. That was the draw. What were we going to learn from Oprah? Back in the 90s, you came home from school and then they had Ricky Lake and they had Maury Povich during the uh, earlier part of the day. They had Sally Jesse Raphael. You see, they had Phil Donahue. They had Montel Williams. They had all of these people and these people were our teachers, if you will. Although worldly, but we learned a lot about the world. You see, and I'll never take that away from any of those people, because if it wasn't for them spending some time with talking to us from the screens. Even Jerry Springfield with his wild shows. We would have still been thinking in whatever mindset we were thinking. And it may not have been good. We would, we probably wouldn't have reached across the table and said, I understand my brother. I understand my sister. I understand that you don't want to be called either. You see, and in Jesus's day, he was doing some things that people weren't used to. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first. Can I tell you, the Lord, he brought a perspective to me. He said, the next time when someone angers you, he says, I want you to be busy. What do you like holding in your hand? Some of you all. For me, I like a pen, right? You put a pen in your hand and you act as if you're writing. What does that do? You're doing a breathing exercise while you're doing it. Your mind is thinking about what you're going to say because you're two, three, four steps ahead of someone. And it also frustrates the people around you because they think you're not listening. It's a battle. It's a tactic. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. God gives you the last laugh. On that truth that you're about to speak. You see, why did I even do that? Sound a little annoying, didn't it? Exactly. Exactly. Because see, when people are annoyed, their mind gets distracted. And whatever they intended on saying, or if they planned on attacking you in a way that was probably far worse than what comes out, These little distractions frustrate them. You see, try it sometime as you are exposing the truth. Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with a woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. There are those who come through this channel that sometimes they want me to go all the way in. They want me to not, you know, be that person that swings into a message of love and, and, you know, care for the sinner as well as the saint. But God won't allow me to do it. Why are we going to go in on someone who still needs to go through a process of healing? 
because you don't like the sound of their voice or you don't like the color of their skin or you don't like the message that they stand on or you don't like who this person is because he's a man or because she's a woman. And meanwhile, God says there's a bigger picture that we need to all be looking at. And then once you see the bigger picture for what it is, then that's when you say, okay, okay, Lord, well, what will you have me to do? That's who he's waiting on is the one who says, well, Lord, what will you have me to do? Like the person at the family holiday event who you may not like that person. You may have issue with the tone of their voice. You may have issue with their gender, the, their social status, their political views, the fact that they go to church or they don't go to church. But God is using that person and we respect that. When that truth is freeing me, when that truth is no longer oppressing me, when you're putting a dollar figure with that truth and you're padding my pockets and helping my family out, I got respect for that. But what I don't have respect for is the individuals who once again continue to perpetuate who continue to do unrighteous, ungodly, disrespectful, and nasty things. Stay tuned to part three.